Fervor following, a woman charged with shooting a Jacksonville police officer when SWAT came to her house is speaking out through her attorney, saying it was all a misunderstanding. Diamonds Ford and her fiancé, Anthony Gant, are now charged with attempted murder on a police officer. The officer was saved by his bulletproof vest. News for Jack's reporter Janice Harris spoke with Ford's attorney. He says she is innocent. Janice? You're right, Tom. He says that she is innocent. She is so sorry about what happened. She had no intention on trying to shoot a police officer and that she is not a cop killer. 28-year-old Diamonds Ford sits in jail accused of shooting a police officer and a marijuana possession. The shooting happened at this house in September while DEA and JSO were issuing a high-risk search warrant. Inside, Ford and her fiancé, Anthony Gant, were sleeping when they were awakened by the sound of glass breaking. She had no idea it was law enforcement in her home. Uh, once they, they actually made their announcement, she completely complied. Ford's attorneys, Wade Roll and Stephen Kelly, say she did not know the police were at her front door and she shot in self-defense and wants to come home to her family. This is the 911 call between Ford and a dispatcher. Hold on, ma'am. Ma'am, he said 7232. What's the name of the street? The dispatcher asked for more information. Ma'am, give me the name of the street. What's happening? Ford continues to talk to the dispatcher. Seven two three two Rutledge Pearson Drive, correct? You know who's shooting? safety expert Ken Jefferson listened to the call. It's clear based on the recording she just felt that someone was breaking into her house because she heard the glass breakage. She reacted in protecting herself and her property which she's allowed to do by law. After the 911 call Diamonds Ford and Anthony Gant were arrested. The JSO officer's life was saved by his bulletproof vest. Ford remains in jail tonight but she has a message for the public. I think that she would want everyone to know that she is not a cop killer, uh, that she respects law enforcement, and that at no time did she have any idea that the person she was firing shots at was indeed JSO. And again, Kelly says that his client is not a cop killer, that she is not a flight risk, and she has never committed a felony. So she deserves a lower bond so that she could get out before the trial. In the meantime, both Ford and Gant remain in jail as they wait for their trials to begin. And also, as far as JSO asked them for a comment, they did not comment, but they did confirm that the JSO officer that was shot is now back on full duty. Reporting live from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, Janice Harris, Channel 4, the local station. Okay, so y'all just heard that exchange right there. And shout out to Darian McNeil because they are the ones that sent me this story. And many of those who are aware of this story are saying that this could have been almost another Breonna Taylor situation. And it almost played out just the exact same way where you had these terroristic cops. If you want to call them that, well, the cops part, but the terrorists can stay busting into somebody's home who most likely isn't the person that they're looking for and then just start popping off. Because in this one, you heard the audio where Diamonds Ford, because that's her name, called the she called 911 and she was talking to the dispatch and she was, if you could tell in the audio, she was talking in a low tone where she was trying not to be heard. She was scared and she felt like somebody was breaking into her home and she felt that if they heard her, they would find her and they would kill her. And then, you know, she's talking in a low tone and everything like that. And then when they finally announced who they were at the door, that's when she was like, wait a minute, hold up. She says, that's the sheriff's office. So when 
she announced it like that and her voice got higher. That means that when they came to her home, they did not announce themselves as that. They just came there and just started banging on the door and tried to get in. Like they, it's almost like, you know, like an intruder, like a burglary was about to be in process in her mind. That's what she thought. And then when she went to the door and was like, wait a minute, hold on. And she said, wait a minute, y'all got the wrong house. So it's like, why are you here? Who are you really looking for? We're not the ones you're coming for. But I noticed that they do this a lot. They intentionally, for the most part, a lot of times go to the wrong house. And it's usually those who look like us to kick up dust to either take us out or put themselves in position to get injured so they could have a reason to throw someone who looks like us in jail, which, as you can see, the latter is happening with both her and her fiance. They said they've been both in jail since September with a very high bond. I'm not sure uh, what the bond is. Uh, I'm scrolling through the article right now to see if they actually put what their bond is, but they're not saying what it is because they right now they're trying to they're saying they're trying to lower the bond and get them out before the trial actually occurs. And they took one shot and shot the uh, cop and they said he hit the vest um, and didn't kill him. But it's crazy because they instantly called her a cop killer or she has to defend herself and say she's not a cop killer even though a cop did not die in the process of, you know, of that exchange that happened that day or that evening. But they automatically are were trying to throw the label of cop killer on here, even though on her, even though a cop didn't die. Just like they tried to get Kenneth Walker the same way. It's like if you shoot at them or shoot them and they don't die in self-defense then you're deemed a cop killer or an attempted cop killer in the case of Kenneth Walker because they got him on attempted murder charges, which, of course, soon after got dropped, which the charges should have never happened in the first place. But, yeah, this woman and this man are still currently in jail right now. With a very high bond that they apparently must not be able to afford to pay because they're still there. That's crazy. But and this happened in Florida, by the way, just in case y'all didn't know. And, you know, the state where it says you can stay on your ground. But see, there it goes again. That stand your ground thing does not work for black people. She legit thought it was an intruder in her home. And you can hear it in the tone of her voice. She sounded terrified. She was speaking in a low tone to the point where the operator had to keep asking her to repeat what she previously said when she was giving out um, her address and other information that they needed. And they didn't announce themselves until much later. I even hear them say they had a warrant. They just said, open up. This is uh, this is JSO. And then that's when she realized who it was at the door because they didn't announce themselves initially on early on, which is something that they are supposed to do. They are supposed to announce early on who is at the door. And they didn't do that. They just came up there and just started banging on the door. Trying to get in and in, and didn't even announce themselves. But that's how it that's how it is out here. But I'm glad that this woman and this man was able to protect themselves. And that there were no casualties because this could have definitely ended up like Breonna Taylor, where one or two of, or both of them could have died in that situation. But it looks to me like they had the upper advantage. But. Also, the con is that is that they are now still they, they're now in jail for defending themselves only in America. It seems I don't know where it's like in the rest of the world, but only in America can a black person to try to defend themselves in their own home and they get persecuted for it. Or be in your home and just be minding your business and someone could just walk in and shoot you because they think it's your apartment. I'm looking at you, Amber Geiger. How many times have we seen these scenarios play themselves out and repeat themselves over and over and over again? It's crazy because we tell black people we need to arm ourselves, we need to protect ourselves. And even when we after we do that, get, you know, with our given right of the Second Amendment, we still get the short end of the stick. They were practicing their 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 Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms. 
and to protect their home. And look at what happened. They still ended up in jail. Crazy how that works out. But I hope that they um that they are able to get everything to work in their favor. It's probably gonna be a long process, longer than it should be, honestly, in my opinion, because of the uh, circumstances. But you know how that goes, unfortunately. But y'all, let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments, and I'll talk to you in the next one. I just wanted to add one more thing in because I really didn't talk about her fiance too much. It was more so about her because I noticed the story only focused on her. But it doesn't seem like to me that he was he didn't pull the trigger. She's the one that pulled the trigger at the uh, the terrorist, the invader. But they arrested him, too, as if he played a part. I guess they said guilt by association. So we're going to take you both. in. so now they're both in jail, which is just ridiculous. Because I skimmed through the article and there's no mention of him getting into an altercation with them. They said the shots came from her. He had no weapon. We don't even know if he was even in the line of sight when she fired. As far as we know, they said they were both awakened. Um, and notice when they do these 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 pop up visits, when people are sleeping, when their bearings aren't all together. That way, they make it seem like they're an easier target. That way, if they break into the home in the house, they can say, hands up, uh, don't resist, or don't move. But when you're trying to get your bearings together, and it's all that noise coming at you at one time, you, you don't know what to do. Because you're just waking up, so your body is not all the way there yet, and you can't move the way you feel that they want you to move. Giving them an excuse to shoot you. They think they slick. We Listen, over here, we figured th their little game out. We figured their game out. Go after them when they're tired. They're not all the way up and then go for the kill or try to. But as you can see, that didn't work in this case. And the only thing that protected the terrorists that broke into this these people's home was that vest. If she if she was if she was to shoot a little bit, which means she shot him either in the torso area or in the chest, because that's where the, the vest would have to be at, in the chest or in the torso. If she shot any higher, she either would have got him like in the neck or in the head. Which says to me, she's probably a, a damn good shooter for her to have shot in that in that range.